Greetings, Tolvis. I'm Damien Holme, your guide to High Valyrian, the mother of all languages featured on HBO's Game of Thrones. Valyria Munyuengos Nuhis Isa. This is Lesson 12, or... <laughs> This one's strictly for my Valyrian nerds out there, but it's gotta be done. In this video, I'll show you the basics of each of the endings we know about for nouns in every case, gender, declension, and plurality. What on Essos do I mean by these terms? Well, review lesson six for gender. Lesson seven for case flavors. Seven hells. Lesson eight for declensions. There's a few survivors out there still. And 11 for plurals. Just like the warlock from Karth. Anyway, let's be real for a sec. Valyrian is supposed to be an ancient language a few thousand years prior to the storyline in Game of Thrones. But in reality, it's still being created as David J. Peterson works his tuckus off to make a full-bodied language. That said, there are parts of today's lesson I can't fill out for you, as they're still behind the scenes until they get spoken into life. Before I begin, you'll see how complex these charts end up looking once I add the pluralities in. It looks freaky, but remember that we don't say pockles and collectives a whole lot. As for plurals, they end up being a lot easier than you might imagine. Instead of writing the full noun over and over again with its different endings, I'm going to show you the part of the noun that never changes at the top, and just put the generalized ending into the chart. That way it's 100% clear what the stem is, and exactly how the suffixes look by themselves. Hopefully this will be easier to memorize the endings than to always see them attached to words. And again, a lot of this is just conjecture on my part, and the parts of the few linguists who are trying to see the trends in Peterson's work on the language so far. So take what you see with a grain of salt, and know that the maester of this language could blow our minds with weird structures we could never predict once season 5 hits. But seriously, DJP, don't do that to us. Please? Alright, <sighs> let's get into this. First, back to the title flavor. Recall that titles are the A stem form. If a noun stem is followed by an A, you can guess that its endings will coincide with this flavor. Titles are very tame, and showcase themes you'll see in a lot of the forms I'm going to be showing in this video. Note that a lot of declensions love to use the same dative, genitive, and locative forms in the plural. That makes memorization a bit easier. You'll also see datives like the letter T, genitives the letter O, instrumentals dig S and Z, and commutatives hog all the M's. Next, celestial. Celestials are the Y stem form. You can see that a lot of the same patterns from title get showcased in celestial, but with Y's instead of A's. Celestial is the only flavor where the instrumental case gets jealous of commutative and copycats the M style. Celestials also have the only break in that easy to memorize dative genitive locative mirroring in the plural form. See that long I sound in the locative plural? If you're like me, it'll bug you as much as it bugs me that five out of six flavors play nice, but this guy, this guy. This time, don't get too scared of Meester. Meester, the O stem, as you recall, gets forms for all four genders. As long and as gross as Maester is, there are a couple things that make it easy here. First of all, we haven't seen almost any of the Paco and Collective forms and were hard pressed to make assumptions about how they'd turn out, so I'll leave them blank for now. Second, across all the genders, we have pretty much the same ending styles. Aquatics like to sneak in that R, but it's mostly the same. The weird thing about Maester is now Commentative is jealous of Instrumental and copycats the S style. I'll confess, I did use an irregular lunar in this example, one ending in I-O instead of just O. That translates into a sneaky I in the suffixes and weird Y sounds in the plural. Most lunars are going to look a lot like the solar, with Oti and Osi in the plural forms. 
on to dry. Dry, the E stem, is something of an enigma. We just haven't had enough examples of dry nouns in more complicated sentences to understand what to expect. A lot of these endings are based on educated guesses and an understanding of the way the rest of Valerian works, especially in the terrestrial gender, since Danny doesn't talk about her family much. Now let's talk about the wet flavor. Unlike dry, when we look at wet, the I stem, we see pretty much the whole chart. DJP actually gave us every form of the word fig. I know. I know. And we can make some safe assumptions as to how that translates from aquatic to lunar and solar genders. The trick to wet is remembering where the I changes to a Y. I don't have a good method for this to be honest, so maybe you can help me think one up. Let me know in the comments if you see something I don't. And last, and easiest, foreign. Foreign. Sweet, sweet foreign. So easy. So memorizable. Let's put more loan words into Valerian so they can all be super easy like this flavor. We haven't seen anything about Pockles and Collectives whatsoever, so your guess is as good as mine for those last two columns. Your head's probably reeling, and believe me, so is mine. But in a couple lessons, I'll shoot some examples of these in play, and you can look back on this ugly lesson and be all like, yeah, yeah, I see how it all works now. But I wanted to do something fun with this next lesson and give y'all another break. So next lesson, we'll talk about some of the differences that we hear when those ridiculous Slaver's Bay people try to speak Daenerys' native tongue. Kirin Vose, thanks again so much for your comments, questions, likes, and subscriptions. We're growing. We're growing. Dothraki.org and Westeros.org are the places to nerd out about the series and the languages. Everybody watching, keep up the party like it's 1999 when winter was coming. Quiero silas. This one's strictly for my dogs, but I wanted to do something fun with this next lesson, like have a barking dog. 1999 when that's a real bark. Well, I know the source of my outtakes on this one. Dog, my dogs. Seriously, they're not.